Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. I'm your instructor Joy. Thank you very much for your continued support. I really appreciate. So this video will be an answer to a subscriber. <laughs> this Valens was wondering how one could hold the value properly, or more specifically, without a shoulder rest. How one could um, hold the violin properly well, because um, it seems like there has been a lot of videos about it. How um, one should actually play without a shoulder rest, and how how the violin should sound better, and so on. All very valuable questions. Of, and uh, this is kind of question that we um, we constantly ask ourselves, and it is worth to always constantly readjust and different to test different things with shoulder rest, without shoulder rest, with shoulder rest, so then which one, which shoulder rest fits better, and also chin rest, and so on. It is always worth to test it or try different things to make our violin playing or basic setup much easier so that our violin hold and playing itself becomes less burdensome. Violin playing is asymmetrical enough. It is, we're twisting our arm, we're standing, there's more weight on our left side and on our right side, and then both are hand moving different direction, it is hard enough. So if we can work on the basics before we spend time on practicing room, and we can have the basic posture set up working better, I, I'm all for it. Now let's start. Proper posture, let's start with that one. Regardless of whether you use shoulder rest or not, um, I, um, I'm trying. I'm going to try to um, give you information that so that you can find your own way, because you may or may not have same body figure and shape and length of the arm like I do or I am. So um, we're not looking for a specific shoulder rest with or without shoulder rest or what brand and what and so on. But what we're rather looking for is how one should feel or how one should. Um, um, have certain body parts placed so that you know that you're in the right place with your violin. So, whether you're holding violin or not, your neck and your spine should be straight. Not stiff straight, but in a relaxed straight stage. So, common mistake that I see is because we have all the uh, value on our left shoulder, we twist our neck and press it down so that we can see it. But when I take my violin, you can see my neck is twisted and tilted and pressing it. Can you imagine the stress that goes through in my neck and on my back? Because it's all carrying and then you're going to get a headache too. It's all connected and ultimately gets to shoulder rest and so shoulder pain, you, you see. So place the violin where the collarbone is on the side like that. So I see commonly, especially um, especially people uh, who play without shoulder rest, uh, some people put the violin on the shoulder. I mean, it sits easier and the shoulder certainly does not get raised. But the problem is the violin is far out. That means we want to see, so we naturally turn our head and look and see, I mean, I'm exaggerating to make a point. Mostly it's a little less, but like a little something like that. And then ultimately we want to see what we're playing. So we turn our head and press it. But this is something that's extremely not correct. So the violin sits rather within your eyesight. You should be able to see it, which means straight on the collarbone, a little diagonal like that. Yeah. So now when you sit that, and then you should be able to place your left arm under the violin and be able to place all the fingertips above the string, like that. And while you do that, also be mindful of your lower body or your a little um, torso or hips. So now, even though we're holding violin with a shoulder, we, you have to remember you're putting additional weight on the left side. So spread out a little more, space out a little both feet like that. Let's see if this is my fit. <laughs> and then the left foot, where the violin is sitting, Go slightly, slightly forward. So both feet a little spacing out, slightly forward, and then tiny bit opening up just to balance it well. A little like that. So it's just tiny bit. So left foot, let's say this is my both feet. Left foot, um, so open it up, left foot slightly forward, 
and just balancing a bit like that. And then put your weight in your torso in between. It's not one way, it's not the other way around. It's okay. Just for a short time, you move your weight from one leg to the other just to, to shake it a little or release the tension on your back, 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 in your back. That's fine. But generally speaking, you should feel certain core, certain connection from your from your core body, from your stomach. Then you put your violin, and then you should be able to place your um, left arm under, and then be able to bring all your fingers above. Now, um, let's see if I'm missing anything. So here, oh, <laughs> so that's, and then this violinist was wondering about the correct angle of the violin when I'm holding it. Should I, uh, which one should I uh, have it? W or which arch should be highest? Or more precisely saying, saying, which string should be at the top? D string or A string or G string? Um, logically thinking, um, which this violin is mentioned too, most likely the middle two strings. And that is very logical way of thinking. It's in the center when you look at the bridge and also the tallest part is rather in the middle section carrying the D and A string. That is correct when you're playing D string. The violin angle should be adjusted depending what string you're playing. I'm gonna get my bow now. So when you're holding violin rather closer to horizontal, then the D string is the highest one. And that's good when you're playing D string. But let's say if you want to play A string, you want to open your body a little up and then making A string the tallest one. Therefore, you have a best access on A. You're playing E string, you bend even more and this time you raise your violin a little up and slightly to your left even. That way you're making your E string even easier to access. Do you see that? So then now, now, so we know that we change the angle now when you go G strings the other way around. Now what you do, is you bring your shoulder forward like that. By doing that, you're tilting your violin this way. So when I do move my shoulder forward, my back might get a little hunched over, but what it does, it pushes this side of violin and makes violin tilted, giving greater access of the G string. Yeah, D string, A, E string. E string, you see sometimes high fat's doing it. He he has a, his chest always opened up, his back bending almost backwards. It's if you I don't want to break your back, but just I'm doing a little exaggerated way to show you the point. So you raise your violin a little up and open your chest up and bending up, bending backwards like this. And a little easier access. Long story short, adjust the angle of the violin depending on what string you're playing. So that the active string is the tallest one. Now, let's go back to shoulder rest or no shoulder rest. There's a great debate about it, and I think there are many, many good points. Um, I personally play shoulder rest myself. Does not mean you should play. That's not what I'm saying. It works for me because I have a rather bony jaw, a bony collarbone. So if I place it, it's a little hard on my skin. So I prefer to use a little cushion and a little height where it gives me a little cushion. And also, but here, you have to be careful that you don't fill up all the gap. That's the mistake um, some people do with a shoulder rest. You should have a um, shoulder rest if you choose to, but there should be still a little room, both sides here and also here for the reason that we want to change the angle of the violin depending on what string you're playing whether you're playing with a shoulder rest or not without shoulder rest if you are feeling comfortable you're having slipping problem sometimes having a little cushion can be helpful i think i just stern tucks his sponge under his shirt and he does that and i believe zuckerman has a little kind of this kind of um, cloth, a little rubber kind of cloth, right under he puts it. Some people have very thin, thin uh, leather going under. And 
they will work fine. If you happen to have a rather muscular neck, muscular, well-built shoulder, then that might work for you. Um, a lot of male players, and um, I mean, Anne Sophie Mutter, she's a very beautiful, skinny uh, lady, female German violinist. She does not have a thick neck, oh, and then she still plays beautifully. So it is, it is possible. I personally prefer to, to use shoulder rest. Whatever you do, make sure you should be able to hold the violin with a relatively straight neck, and you should be able to adjust the angle. I find that when I play with that shoulder rest, high position playing a little becomes hard because in lower position you can once in a while get hold of the violin with your using thumb a bit, but when you go high position, the thumb no longer helps holding the violin, therefore you have to really hold the violin with your shoulder and chin, whether it's high position E string or G, and that becomes a little hard for me personally. Um, but uh, some, uh, some people, uh, there are players who play without shoulder rest, they almost treat it like a sacred. And that sometimes I have, uh, I don't agree totally, saying like, oh, if you don't know how to play without shoulder rest, you're not a real violinist. Look at this, all these great violins, high fits, uh, stern, and, and uh, they all played it without it, and you should be able to do that. Um, you have to understand that shoulder rest was invented in 19th century. And these guys were active after, or the, in the time, in the bridging time, uh, before shoulder rest and after shoulder rest invention. So I would not be surprised uh, there's a little that story uh, influenced. But one could say same thing about chin rest which is equally important when, when it comes to violin setup because not only he has to sit well here but also he has to grip well talking of which the chin rest could go a little more in the middle a little more side again you should be able to just see it and be able to adjust it and that's all it but this chin rest was invented in just one century earlier than shoulder rest yet we don't hear much about chin rest or no chin rest debate, isn't it? <laughs> to me, to me personally, it seems like chin rest was one century early, it was invented one century earlier, so we have a little longer adoption time, so we're more um, comfortable using it. Yet, shoulder rest, there was a lot of, um, that, a lot of people who were, who had a career between those times, and there's a little debate whether the shoulder rest can be used or not. In my opinion, one should use everything to make violin playing easier, whether it's shoulder rest, chin rest, anything. Because you have to remember, in the time of Bach, they had a no shoulder, no shoulder rest, no chin rest, and then they had a gut string, which sounded beautiful, but so unreliable, it would go out of tune. With a simple drop of temperature, your violin will go all out of tune, all the hard practicing out to the window. Some people also claim that playing without shoulder rest sounds better, which to me sounds a little skeptical because when you're holding violin without shoulder rest, you will soon realize you have a much wider surface of your violin body touching, by your, uh, touching with your shoulder or body part. That means you're damping the vibrating wood in, in theory, when you damp the wood, the sound actually should reduce. I'm not saying uh, to. I'm not saying that's this or that. I don't want to criticize too much, but just bringing the fact. When you damp bigger surface of the wood, normally the sound production reduces. The, the amount differs so much so there's even shoulder rest that try to minimize the 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 contact of the wood to keep the maximum of uh, resonance. So they have a little sh um, shoulder rest that screws on at the, at the end like that. Long story short, in my opinion, you should, we should all explore all these possibilities, whether it's new invention, new innovation, some crazy idea, whatever it makes our violin play easier. 
violin playing is hard enough. Let's not make it harder by keeping certain things or somebody that, that whoever, how great they are. You know, it, it, it worked for them, great, that may or may not work for me or for you. So you, this is something that we, each of us, has to spend time, find a way, that way you can hold your violin with relatively healthy body alignment and also be able to adjust the violin as you play. Yeah? So I hope this gave an idea and I wish you all happy practicing and healthy violin playing. Hope to see you again. Bye-bye.